Okay. How you were saying? Huh? Oh, my phone rings. I pick it up, and the voice asks, Mr. Praskin? And I say yes, and a voice yells, if you're not out of that loft by April the 30th, I'm going to kill you. Then they hang up. Is it a man or a woman? A man. Oh, Steve. Yeah, Mike. Uh, this is Detective Carell and this is Dave Preston. Mr. Preston. How do you do? Uh, I'm having de Detective Carell come in on this. I'm uh, going on vacation tomorrow. Vacation? What happens to me? Detective Carell can handle it as well as I could. Maybe better. Uh, Mr. Preston's been getting threatening phone calls. Mm -hmm. Anybody you know might have a grudge against you, Mr. Preston? I thought everybody I know liked me. Is there anybody who might believe that you've harmed him in a business or a personal way? I don't harm anybody. I'm just sitting in my office minding my own business when this voice tells me to move out or he'll kill me. Is there anything special about your place of business, Mr. Preston? Special? It's a crummy little loft with mice as big as rabbits. Well, it doesn't sound particularly desirable. Desirable for other mice, maybe. But not so you should kill a man. I don't know, it just doesn't add up to extortion. He hasn't made an actual attempt on your life, has he? Well, what do you want me to do, wait till he kills me? Maybe it is extortion. He's trying to get him out of the loft by threatening him. I can't sleep nights. My wife is sick with worry. So what are you going to do? Does he make these calls at any specific time, Mr. Preston? In the afternoon, late, between 4 and 5. All right, I'll drop by. Uh, what's your address, please? 987 Culver Avenue. You can't miss it. It's right over the old Mercantile State Bank. to them the way they build a bank nowadays. The vault comes first. It's fitted into the shell of the building. A web of steel is crisscrossed into the vault floor between the layers of concrete. The rods are constructed of laminated layers of steel. The grain of one layer running crisscross to the grain of the next. We're under the vault now. See, all the time they've been building, we've been tunneling. As soon as they poured the concrete, we removed it before it set. So when they're open for business, we're in business to open. What about the steel reinforcing rods? Did you ever hear of an acid called aqua regia? No. Well, this is what it does to steel. Now, right below the surface of the vault is the wiring box for the alarm. That's where you come in. How's it strike you? Screwy. More than that. Crazy. It's impossible. Come on. See, that's the beauty of it. Now, most policemen are plodding pedestrian thinkers. You give them a plodding pedestrian project, they can figure it out. Fortunately, we're dealing with a very unimaginative police department. They weren't so unimaginative when they sent me to jail. Well, examine the police department. Now, there are about uh, 20,000 cops in this city. Now, it's the job of those 20,000 policemen to make sure that 8 million residents do not commit criminal acts. Now, they work in three shifts, so each cop is responsible for about 1,200 people. Isn't that right? I guess so. All right, come on. Let's go upstairs. Oh, 
Oh, this is uh, Ray. He specializes in burglar alarms. This is Pop. He's bombs. How are you, Ray? I'm Chuck, general uh, utility. All right, Ray. Chuck, nice to meet you. Well, I'll see you later. See you around. Now, to be specific, let's take the detectives of the 87th Squad. Normally, there are 16 men on duty. However, when we pull our job, two will be on vacation and two at the FBI school in Washington. Now, that leaves 12 men for the entire precinct. Now, do you have any idea how difficult it would be for those 12 men if everybody in that precinct decided to break the law at the same time? No. Well, neither do they. They just know it won't happen. They work on the theory that in the long run, they'll be in the right place at the right time and make an arrest. That's the law of percentages they play. And that's the key phrase. In the long run. So how do you guarantee they're not in the right place for you? By the threatening phone calls I've been making, and by these uh, bombs Pop and Chuck have been working on. Oh, you mean the uh, police will be busy investigating? Exactly. We fouled up the percentages. We forced the police into dealing with the short run. Now, when they're looking in all the wrong places, what happens here? I don't know. What happened? We walk off with over a million bucks. Does it still sound impossible? Got an extra set of plans? I get these calls. That is bad enough. But my daughter, when she answers, he says, tell your father if he is not out of the shop by the 30th of April, I will kill him. She has great respect and affection for her father, so she becomes hysterical. Yes, hysterical. It is not true that we are impassive. She cries, screams. It is very upsetting. I'm sure it is. That's all he says. Is it not enough? No, I, I was just hoping for something that might give us a lead, Mr. Chen. I did talk to him once. I interrupted, asked him not to plague my daughter. I said I had his message, and I was considering it. Did he answer you? He said, speak up. Were you talking in the same tone? I mean, were you talking as loud as you're talking to us? Just the same. Was it a bad connection, Mr. Chen? No. Mr. Chen, do you keep a lot of money in your shop? We sell toys, knickknacks from Hong Kong. Unfortunately, not a very lucrative business. Is there any place in your building that handles a lot of money or jewelry, sir? Certainly. Just below me are the Sung Brothers, importers, precious jade, objects of art. Yes, very valuable. Well, we'll see what we can do for you, Mr. Chen. Can you not trace the call? No, that's almost impossible with an automatic telephone, sir. Thank you for your courtesy. Well, thank you very much, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Chen. Thank you. Well, Chen makes the fourth one. I wonder if he's the last. No, I wouldn't think so. Now, somebody's got the bright idea of alerting us to a half dozen or a dozen possible burglaries. Every one of these people threatened is next to jewelry, to money, to something. And... And we have to guess which shell the P is under. Yeah, and all we've got to go on is a very pleasant-voiced heckler who may or may not be hard of hearing. Yeah, and who may or may not rob a credit office, a jewelry store, a Chinese importer, or a bank on or after the 30th of April. Suppose not one of these people moves out. What's he going to do then? I never thought of that. Got a hunch our heckler has. Mr. Lombardi, you get out of that store by the 30th or I'll kill you. Little Ace is about to fire. I'm down. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. I'll say uh, five and uh, five more. <laughs> On what? All I see is three cards to a possible straight flush. Well, if you look a little more closely, you'll see the winning hand. Huh? Not from where I sit. Here's five and uh, five more. All right, I'll just call. Still a possible straight. I'll check. 
Well, I'll go easy on you. It'll just cost you five to see it. I'll see it. Straight to the ace. Which I believe beats your three aces. How'd you know I had three aces? On the way you bet. You mean you bet into three aces on the possibility of a straight flush? On the strength of the percentages, Chuck. You see, in order to improve my hand, I needed a diamond. Or a ten. Any ten. Now, mathematically, those odds are two to one. Now, you needed to catch a fourth ace. Or a six for a full house. Well, you couldn't catch the fourth ace, since that was my down card. And the chances of your getting another six are fifteen and a half to one. Yeah, but suppose neither one of us got the card we needed. I had you beat on the board. There's $45 in the pot. Now, with the odds going for me, it would cost me five to get back 50. You want to see me? You finish the bombs? Sure. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. I want to talk to you. But uh, I'll be late for work. Well, this won't take long. Hey, Pop, why don't you give up that lousy night watchman job? In a few days, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, gentlemen, when we all started, we agreed there'd be no secrets from each other. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Pop? Yeah, sure, that's right. Well, then you can understand my surprise, or even shock, to learn that you were holding out on us. Well, I don't understand. You have a woman friend. Sure, yeah. You've been seeing quite a bit of her. Oh, we're going to get married. But you never mentioned it. Well, I didn't figure it was anybody's business. In other words, it was your secret. No, I figured that... I suppose you're going to marry her when you get some money. After. After a certain date you've already mentioned to her. Oh, I wouldn't do that. I don't want you to see her again. Write her, talk to her, in any way get in touch with her. Okay, if you say so. Good for you. Go to work, Pop. What'd you do that for? He said he wasn't going to see her again. Because he gave in too easily. He was lying. I remember when the park was where you went on Sunday for a picnic. Now it's a place where kids find stiffs. That's where they were playing hide and seek. <laughs> How long have they been dead, Tom? About 10 or 11 hours. He was killed yesterday. He was probably dumped in the park last night. Yeah, you know, uh, we hardly ever see one just wearing shoes and socks. Generally, they're either all dressed or all undressed. Well, we did find some clothing in the zoo incinerator. Well, did it get you anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it sure did. It got us a lot of ashes. We got them in a the lab now. One kiss before I kill. Well, Tom, I didn't know that you were a student of higher literature. I like detective stories. They, uh, they come up with some real challenges for the medical examiner. Like, for instance, in this one, they find three bodies without a mark on them. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, hi, Sam. Yeah, they're here right now. Sure, I'll tell them. Right, fine. Grossman at the lab said to tell you it was a uniform. They don't know what kind it is, but they want you to drop right over. Oh, thanks, sir. Uh, by the way, you fellas ought to read that book because there's a private eye in it uses the deductive method. Do oh, I never read detective mysteries, Tom. They frustrate me. I always suspect the wrong man. We weren't able to get anything out of the ashes of the uniform except that it was made of wool. Yeah, Blaney told us that. There were some cloth fibers sprayed into the wounds. Yeah, they must have cut the buttons off before they burned the uniform. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Sam. Thanks. Well, hold on. I'm waiting for a report on the matchbox. What matchbox? Oh, it's not really a matchbox. It's a, a folder. A, yeah, like this. We might get something out of it if we're lucky. How soon can you tell? Take it easy. It's a slow, delicate process. First of all, we've got to hope that none of you bulls stepped on it when you were stomping around looking for clues. Thank you. We love you, too. Now, we have to put the ashes on a glass plate. We uh, moisten it with a hot solution of 1% gelatin and water. Cover it with another glass plate. Squeeze the air bubbles out and put it in a printing frame. 
Then we photograph it on an orthochromatic plate. On a what plate? Orthochromatic. Oh, it's a kind of a... Here they are. Uh, oh. Careful, they're still damp. There they are. Any hmm. luck? Well, uh... First of all, your suspect is 23 years old and, uh, probably a college graduate. Sometime during the past year, he smoked a marijuana cigarette, and he's been dating a blonde between the ages of 19 and 22. Wait, you, but, you got all that from... Sam, you forgot to mention about his serving in the U.S. Cavalry. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, he was a gunner on a tank during the Korean War. Wait a minute, you got all this from a photo of a burnout match Oh, wait a minute, I'm not finished yet. It's blank. <laughs> Sam, you are a louse. <laughs> you really minute. had me going for a minute. Wait a minute, there is something here, and uh, this is for real. I'll be on a hotel, 4th and Jefferson. You know this man? He's dead. What happened to him? We don't know yet. We're trying to find out. Do you know him? Well, sure. He came here all the time. What's his name? I don't know. I thought you said you knew him. Oh, he didn't stay here. He just came to see one of the guests. It's going to be rough on her. Who is she? For Miss Constantine. She lives here. We'd like to talk to her. Down here? Down here, upstairs. Doesn't make any difference. I'll call her. Uh, Miss Constantine, this is Roger downstairs. There's, uh, there's some detectives here who want to talk to you. Yes, ma'am, detectives. All right. She'll be right down. She uh, seemed a little upset when she heard you were detectives. Yeah, we seem to have that effect on people. Roger, how old would you say he was? 50, 55, it's hard to tell. He had the kind of a face that, well, you'd meet him three times and never remember him. You can tell that by the picture. Thank you. Uh, look, Steve, uh, you better talk to this Miss Constantine. You're a little better with uh, older people. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You wanted to see me? Uh, you're Miss Constantine? That's right. Um, Miss Constantine, I'm Detective Corella. This is Detective Kling. Is there some place we could talk? Well, certainly. Why are you staring at me? Well, it's just that you're not exactly what we expected. Well, I don't understand. What's it all about? Miss Constantine, this man was found shot to death in the park. Kirk says that he was a friend of yours. Johnny. Johnny who? Oh. Who killed him? We don't know yet. Well, why would anyone? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Can you tell us his name? Smith. John Smith. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? Where did he live? I don't know. How long did you know him? About six months. You know him well? Very well. You don't know where he lived? I didn't call on him. He came to see me. Miss Constantine, we're trying to find out who killed this man. Now, you're the only lead we have to his identity so far. John Smith, address unknown, doesn't give us much to go on. He told me his name was John Smith. A lot of men are named John Smith. Why shouldn't he be? You know, I worked. No. What he did for a living? He had some kind of a job as night watchman. You don't know where? He never said. Do you know any of his friends? Did he ever mention any names? He didn't have any friends. He, he was a lonely man. He used to meet me after work. What do you do for a living, Miss Constantine? I'm assistant manager of a beauty parlor. Before that, I was a singer. You never heard of me. Nobody did. How did you meet Smith? 
I don't think that's any of your business. Anything that has to do with John Smith is our business. All right, do you want to answer the question here, or do you want to answer it at the police station? What are you, a tough cop? I can be a tough cop if I think somebody's holding out on me. Well, you see, miss, most people, if a man called on them for six months, would know a little bit more about him than just his name. I'm not most people. I'm me. You're a regular machine, aren't you? Punch in the card, and out comes the right answer. You come here telling me Johnny's dead, and then you start asking a lot of questions, and then you tell me how most people would act. Well, Mr. Detective, whatever your name is, let me tell you something you don't know about me and about Johnny. I've been in love with some of the best-looking trumpet players in town. After the last one, I took a walk to the river. I was standing on the bridge ready to jump when Johnny came along. Hey, go on. He was sweet. He was kind. He was thoughtful. And he asked very little in return. I never met anybody like that before. Sure. He looks pretty silly there, but... You won't look so good either when you're dead. Thank you, Miss Constantine. If you think of anything else that can be useful to us, could you please phone? I told you everything I know. Want your card back? this up, paint it, and we're in business. I have some license plates. Thinking you have it ready by the day after tomorrow? Sure, no problem. But why an ice cream truck? Because it's the most innocent looking vehicle you can have. What do you think of when you see it? Ice cream. Well, what do you think of when you think of ice cream? Vanilla? Children. That's why it's so innocent. Who'd suspect an ice cream truck of carrying hot money? Well, I could say it's the slowest getaway I ever heard of. An ice cream truck on a ferry boat. Well, that's just the point. With all those bridges, we'd expect us to take a ferry. Now, you just stick to the wiring. I'll do the thinking. Okay. Just asking. Well, you just answered. Now, let's go to work. Oh, um, I want those maps and blueprints. I'm going to burn them. Look at the tracing on this. Well, I didn't. Look at it. Oh, <laughs> Pop must have done that. He borrowed it. He said he wanted to check something. He copied. I guess it's all right to let you in, Miss Constantine. Although it's irregular and uh, I could get into trouble. Well, for your trouble. Thank you. It's nice to see you again. Just slam the door shut when you're finished. Thank you. following me. This is Smith's room, isn't it? Why'd you tell us you didn't know where he lived? All right, Mr. 
Miss Constantine. Uh, first time, Detective Krell and I were just asking you a few questions. Now, you've lied to us, and you're in a room where you don't belong. Suppose you tell me what it's all about. If I did, you wouldn't understand. Well, try me. You probably won't believe it, but I wrote Johnny some letters. Yes, I did, like a schoolgirl. Whenever I left him, I found I still had things to say, so I wrote them. What's in them that's so incriminating? My feelings. I hadn't written letters like that since I was in my teens. We have given them back to you. After you read them. They're nobody's business but mine. Are those the letters? There's nothing in them would interest you. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Constantine, but you have to let us decide that. Did you find anything else? What is it? Looks like the floor plan of a bank. I'll take that. <laughs> Now, don't make me use this on you, too. Sure, I knew her. She'd come to see Mr. Smith before. That's why I let her in. No Smith's real name? <laughs> Mr. Half, the guys in this hotel are named Smith. You know where he works? Huh. Do you have any other information on him? He paid his rent on time and said hello. Say you saw Detective Kling come up here. That's right. I told him Smith's room number when he showed me his badge. And I told him I'd just let Miss Constantine in the room. You didn't see any other man come up here? Nope. Could another man have come up here without your knowing it? Oh, sure, sure. He could have come in the basement or up the fire stairs. Or even slipped by when I'm busy. Say, how do you know the dame didn't shoot him? And you didn't see Miss Constantine leave, huh? No, no. No, her I would have noticed. We don't get many good-looking bra... or women around here. Did Smith have any men friends who visited him? Mister, when you have friends, you don't live in this dump. Where's your telephone? In the hall. I did the right thing, huh? Calling an ambulance? Might have saved his life, huh? Yeah, you did exactly right. Hello, give me the squad room, please. Yeah, Bill, this is Corella. Listen, when you send a man over to the Albion Hotel, 4th and Jefferson, to pick up Lottie Constantine, I don't think she'll show, but just in case, huh? Yes, I'm a friend of the man who was just brought in. Detective Kling. How is he? Still unconscious, huh? That's too bad. Will he live? Well, I'm very glad to hear that. No, no, there's uh, no message, thank you. Go back. Well, relax. You like a drink? You sure? Something to eat? Not a thing. I have to apologize for this room. I've only been here a few months, but I have to be near my work. Now, you look like the kind of woman a man can talk sense to. Is that right? I'm sure you are. Now, consider my problem. I was forced to shoot a policeman, and that's not good. Policemen have friends, other policemen, and they hold grudges. To make matters worse, there was a witness to the shooting. Now, the normal thing to do under those circumstances would be to kill the witness. But in this case, it's a very attractive woman. Now, it's against my principles to destroy beauty. I much prefer to cherish it. That's my statement. What's yours? What was your connection with Johnny? This. The detective said that was the floor plan of a bank. That's right. 
Right next door, to be exact. You're gonna rob it. Well, you either put money in a bank or you take it out. And Johnny was in this with you? In a small way, yes. Didn't seem like that kind of man. Well, he wanted money. Even as you and I. I don't want that kind of money. Well, it all buys the same things. As a matter of fact, I'd say you were a very lucky girl as long as... As long as what? <sighs> there are two kinds of girls. Tramps. And they disgust me. High-class girls take time and money. You have to send them perfume, flowers, candy. Take them out. Woo them. Well, I've never had the time for that. Now, in you, I see a high-class girl. Well, thanks. Now we can take the flower and perfume for granted. So let's consider I've wooed you satisfactorily, and here we are. How do you know I'm not a tramp? By looking at you. And that isn't all I know about you. No? You're not a city girl. Midwest. Medium-sized town, middle-class background. You came to the city seeking fame and fortune as... Singer. But you didn't quite cut it. How did you know all that? Because I'm a very astute judge of people, and because it's written all over you. Now, there's nothing very unusual to the story, except that this one has a happy ending. How's that? Because you have me instead of Bob. I'm younger, more attractive, and I'll soon be a lot richer. So I'll take his place. And won't that make me a tramp? On the contrary. It will make you very intelligent and discerning. And besides, you really have no other choice. I don't think so, Bill. But thanks just the same. Just a second. In a look. I came up blank. How's Bert? Still the same. Can we talk to him at all? I already asked. The doctor said no. Uh, yeah, Bill. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep in touch. And thanks a lot. So long. You know, I've been wrong about the guys at 86. They just called us if Bert needed any blood. Too bad Bert can't tell us who did it. They might not know, Rod. He could tell us though, whether the woman trapped him. Maybe where she is. Is there any report from the patrolman watching our hotel? Not yet. Bert will make it. He's in good condition. Okay. 87 Squad, Detective Carrillo. Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. 38 caliber. Yeah. Oh, he's... He's holding his own, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Well, ballistics reports that the bullet that hit Bert came from the same gun that shot John Smith. Today. Looks very professional. Who's she? We have brains and brawn. Gentlemen, let me introduce Beauty. Mrs. Lottie. Yeah? What's her job? To look beautiful. Well, I don't like dames around. Not on this kind of a deal. Well, I like dames at all times, and she's my problem, not yours. Looks like the real thing, doesn't it? I'll take strawberry. Well, we'll only carry a pistachio. It's all green. for the new Mercantile State Bank. Everything okay so far?
Good afternoon. There's a bomb in a shoebox somewhere in the orchestra of your theater. Is there? What? A bomb in the orchestra? Could be. Would you uh, like to make a few calls? No, thank you. Hey! Hey, come here! Hey, look at this! Why, it's a beautiful sight. It was a very stupid thing to do. Don't try it again. Ada Seville Squad, Detective Havlin. What did you say? And what's the address? Yes, right away. Thank you. Hey, Joe. I got enough of the bomb squad. 743 North Euclid Road. And now we can't handle it here. We're snowed already. We've done that already, Joe. The lieutenant's got all three shifts on now. Okay? Where have you been? Baby's sitting a million dollars. I got it all tucked away in a nice new boat. Eight to seven squad, Havlin. Look, Joe, I don't care what your lieutenant said. What do you think we're doing here, making up those calls? Well, get some help from downtown, Joe. All right, they've been keeping you busy. Sixteen calls so far. Most of them bomb threats. Just threats? Three for real so far. A market and two theaters. Little stuff, mostly smoke. But it sure keeps the switchboard lit up. That Meyer sure knew when to take a vacation, didn't he? 87 Squad, Detective Gorilla. This is Mr. Gadley at the New Mercantile State Bank. Yes, what is it, Mr. Gadley? I'm about to test the alarm just before we lock up for the night. I'll trip it just after I hang up. Right. Harry, listen, they're going to test the alarm at the new Mercantile State Bank, so don't come out running when it goes off, huh? Right. It's right on schedule. All right, get to work on those wires. Okay. these wires. It's going to be clear sailing. Okay, do it then. There's the red one. There's the blue one. The clippers. All right, now you're sure when you cut those wires, you're not going to set off the alarm? Ah, uh, we'll know for sure in two seconds. Okay. In an hour and a half, we're going to be on our way with that money. Turns out to be a coot and has no robbery. Oh, I guess you use a laugh like that. I'm afraid our friend hasn't gone to all this trouble just for laughs. We're just sitting in our hands. Can you think of anything else to do? That's what's bugging me. I can't. Okay, this is the last of it. All right, I'm going to take the rest of it up and get loudy. Right. This stuff sure packs nice. And I really feel sorry for all those poor slobs who work nine to five, five days a week, year in and year out. I'll never earn half as much as is in one of those boxes. Thanks a million. 
I'll grab these. Hey, Mr. Chuck, we ought to make the ferry in 45 minutes. Easy driving. It's hot money, cold. All right, now you ride with me. Happy day. You know, they say money can't buy happiness. Well, I've got news for them. I'm happy already. You had three already. Bucky the pig. All he does is eat. Don't talk that way about your brother. Well, he is. All right, all right. You save all the bickering till we get home. Oh, for the peace and quiet of the squad room. It was fun, wasn't it? Going back to the same place we spent our honeymoon. It's a little different. We didn't have kids then. So we better get ready. I bet you a tribe of gypsies could travel for nine years with less luggage than we need for one week in the country. You have to take so many rocks. I need them for my collection. You want to collect them, you carry them. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Like something a little lighter, like butterflies. Maya, we're still on our vacation. Enjoy yourself. Oh, I forgot. All right, kids, let's laugh it up. You know, you can carry this ladylike aloofness a little too far. I said I didn't like tramps, but you can go too far the other way. You leave a girl so much pride. Can we be home soon, Daddy? I'm tired. You can sit down on the bus. Why don't we take a taxi? Because we can't afford a taxi. If you figure out the fares for all four of us, the taxi's cheaper. Where'd you learn arithmetic? Oh, look, an ice cream wagon. Can I have some ice cream, Daddy? You'll spoil your supper. No, it won't. Please, Dad, go on, Maya. Tomorrow they can get back to normal. And that's even worse. Okay. Now, what'll it be? Walnut crunchy. Chocolate sundae. And I'll have plain vanilla. One walnut crunchy, a uh, chocolate sundae, and a vanilla. Uh, we can't wait on you. We're waiting to get on the ferry. This line won't move for five minutes. Get that square out of here. Uh, well, we're sold out. And nothing left at all? That's right. Why don't you tell me in the first place? I'm telling you now. Some salesman, huh? That's it. Never heard of that kind before. Happy days. Neither have I. It must be new. Come on, let's get going. It's getting late. You now, if all our salesmen act like that, they're not going to win any awards. Oh, wait a minute, wait. Those license plates. You and the kids wait right here. What are you taking a ferry for? To get back to the plant. What do you think, huh? Who's that clown think he is? The plant's across the river. How come your license plates start with MBW? Look, mister. Mind showing me the registration for this vehicle? Why should we? 87 precinct. Oh, sure, officer, but we, we want to catch the ferry. You'll make it. Registration. It's in a, in a compartment. It ain't here. Funny, it was there. Yeah. Let me see your license. You stay here. Hey, 
Hey, uh, fella, you're holding up the line. The line waits. Here you are. This is a driver's license. You're operating a truck. Where's the company located? I never heard of it. But what are you going to do, make a federal case out of it? People are waiting. Beat it. All right, pull out a line. you going forever. I had it figured out every step of the way. Oh, yeah. Well, except for one thing. Myers' kids. Yeah. You know, if you read it in a story, you'd never believe it. Well, like they say, truth is stranger than fiction. As Constantine says, we can add kidnapping to the burglary and murder charges we've got against you. Yeah. Well, she was willing enough. That's for the court to decide. I'll take him downstairs, will you, John? Kids. How's Miss Constantine? Well, taking all things in consideration, she's in pretty good shape. Well, that is not new. Meyer, how does it feel to be up for accommodation? Yeah. I wouldn't know. My kids are taking all the credit. <laughs> Hello, 87 Squad, Detective Corella. You will put him on. It's the hospital. They're, they're going to put Bert on. Bert? <laughs> hey, it's good to hear your voice again. Uh, how do you feel, huh? What? Yeah, yeah, Bert, that's very helpful. Sure, we'll, we'll get right on it. You take it easy, we'll see, huh? What? Well, Bert says that somebody is going to rob the new Mercantile State Bank. <laughs> <laughs> 